Hey everyone, I'm Nato King and welcome back to Control. Last time, we made it all the way to the Panopticon. Dylan is in here somewhere, along with a whole bunch of altered items and a rogue TV. But I'm going to ignore all of that for the moment. We didn't get to talk to Langston very much on our way through because the video is running really long. I want to see what he's got to say now. Stop hits theaters tonight. I can't believe I'm missing an Alex Casey movie for this. Hey, it's another Alan Wake reference. Is the TV back in its box yet? No rush or anything, it's just, you know, an ongoing concern. Do you like working at the FBC? Sure. I mean, yeah, the drama's a bit much, but I get better benefits here than I would over at the Postal Service. I checked better health care. That's not to say I don't like my job, ma'am. Been here over 15 years. No one knows the Panopticon collection better than me. I'm, uh, close to them, in a way. I can't tell if that's creepy or normal here. How do you keep the altered items under control? It depends on the item. Each one has different needs. Ritualistic touches go a long way. Singing to them. Did he say singing? Flipping the lights three times, that sort of thing. It's not superstition if it works. What's the difference between objects of power and altered items? Think of them like storms. Objects of power are like tropical cyclones or hurricanes for the uneducated. They're big, rare, and scary. Of course, directors can just bind the OOP and become the eye of the storm. Altered items are more like weird thunderstorms. Some may rain frogs, some may rain corn, but they all rain something. And how does the hiss factor into all that? It's changing them, making them aggressive. Now they're all raining, I don't know, knives. Knife rain. Nice metaphor. Did you work closely with Trench? Oh, he spent most of his time with Darling and all them. The inner circle. Not that I care. Trent certainly had his favorites. He did stop in occasionally to scowl and smoke. Did you know the Bureau has a no-smoking policy? It does. Just not for Trench. Still, he is the one who put aside funding for the Panopticon. The man did have vision. How did you get this job? Started as a junior agent because my uncle knew a guy. From there I got put on a desk until an accident left the containment sector severely understaffed. At which point I got bumped up to management. Put in a steady eight hours a day for another 10 years and voila, supervisor. I just picked up a gun. Or a gun picked me. I'll see you later, Langston. I'll be here, like always. Hey, listen to this. Containment failure in Panopticon cell 69. Get it? 69. I do not see what is humorous about an escaped paranatural entity originating from cell 69, sir. But you just said it. Come on, you guys, it's funny. He's so precious, but something about his sense of humor kind of rubs me the wrong way sometimes. Oh well, we'll have more dealings with him in the future. I do think it's kind of funny that Jessie makes a big deal early on about everybody calling her director and she hates it, and then this guy asks to be called Fred and she insists on calling him Langston. Uh, I don't know if anybody needed me to point that out. Nope, we did not get a better seize speed. It was close, though. There are a bunch of these bridges. And a lot of them have fights on them. So I need to take it slow and steady, especially since I decided to put on charge just so y'all can see how it works. 
one way you can use it is to charge it up and shoot multiple projectiles at once. And the other way is just to shoot them one at a time. I've got a couple of countermeasures involved with killing enemies here with abilities and shatter. Abilities ought to be pretty easy because C's counts. Shatter, maybe not so much. I really don't use this gun very often. Also, launch is an ability. I keep forgetting about that. But that's over and done with. There's sometimes things under the bridges. Usually it's just a place for enemies to hide where they'll try to sneak up behind you and catch you off guard. There are a bunch of these fortified units around, and we can't get into most of them. I don't even know what's in them. They don't appear to be used for altered items, because here's where altered items are kept. These units. Remember this post box? We read a report about it at some point. Let's see if I can find it in here. It's always under case files. There we go. Yeah, the post box that freezes people in place. And if you look at the containment location over on the right, floor one, unit 13, that's where we are. Pretty much all the altered items you read about, you can find here in the Panopticon, in exactly the cells it tells you. There's the picnic basket that attracts animals. It's kind of neat to just make your way around here and see what there is to see. There's the fan that suffocates people. And over here is some kind of sledgehammer. Don't think I've seen a document about that yet. I do vaguely know what it's about, at least. And not a very useful floor plan. The entire third floor is redacted. I have no idea why. I know what's on the third floor, and I don't know what it is that they would have pasted over. Yeah, we can get out here. It is possible to make your way around the outside of these floors by very, very carefully jumping across the ledges. It's not worth it. Something went wrong with the Bureau's plan to make Dylan the next director. Marshall made it sound like it was all Dylan's fault, but how much of it was what the Bureau did to him? I don't think she's telling me everything. Yep, yeah, there are definitely hiss out there. At least they can't get to us while we're still in the elevator. But I'm going to wait until it's going to be easier to get around the outer ring of the Panopticon before I do any real exploring here. Uh, what's that sign say? It can only be seen from here, and it's way too... Uh, the sign part kind of flew away. Hey, at least I can read it. Only open one containment locker at a time. Surely good advice, but I don't know if I can open any of them. Here's an empty cell. This is one of the altered items that's escaped. We'll have to track it down at some point. Hello? Is, it, is anyone there? What are you doing in there? Oh, thank God! Look, someone has to watch this object at all times, or it deviates. My ship replacement never showed up. Can you help me? Damn. I can't. I'm sorry. There's an emergency. I'll come back. I promise. Okay. Okay. Just don't forget. I can't stare at this thing much longer. Yep, so we've got a side mission we can't do until after we've found Dylan. Can't even see what's inside that cell. Eh, that's another empty one. 
And it sounds like somebody's fighting over there. We'll see if I can rescue them. Yeah, the projectiles from charge are sadly way too slow to work on these hiss elevated. But shatter works pretty well. And launching can work if you do it rapidly enough. It, it's pretty familiar by now, I think. Oh, I was going to say, no sign of the rangers, but it looks like they're still there. They just weren't right where I was. I never really used to like charge very much, but I can't deny it is incredibly effective when you manage to hit with it. Yeah, there's no way to get further up to the fifth floor where Dylan is. We're going to have to find this object of power. And nothing to be found under the bridge either. Oh, there's the ranger. Good to see someone alive and well after I've been through. Alright, so here we are at an opened fortified unit, and this is the one that we saw on the security monitor downstairs. Somebody left this dead body just in the path of the door, preventing it from closing. Which is fortunate, because it's the only way we'd be able to get in. And that'll be the TV. That's the object of power. I need to cleanse it. Yeah, it's an episode of Night Springs. Okay, but still not much weirder than the stuff that the building already does on its own. Yeah, the room's now sideways, and very much like something out of an M.C. Escher painting. We got staircases in all directions on all surfaces. We can get back out if we need to, but onward it is. I want that TV. Gravity just isn't a thing anymore. And we got a bunch of hiss in here that I can't actually attack until I enter the room. Pretty sure I can't do any damage until they really start moving here. And yep, we got a boss health bar. And we finally know what happened to Salvador. Should be no trouble getting the last couple of kills that I need for these countermeasures, though. Yeah, sadly, Salvador took a bunch of rangers down with him, so we've got to fight all of them. And that was way too close to my feet. Charge will actually hurt you if you don't get some distance from the blast. Meanwhile, I pretty much want to ignore Salvador himself until I'm sure that all of the other guys have been dealt with. They don't respawn or appear from anywhere. There are just so many of them around the room 
And if I can defeat all of them, then there won't be any more to deal with. You know, at least put Grip back on here. I just have this funny feeling I'm not going to be killing anybody with Shatter. And there's some health there if I can get to it. But... Missed my cover by that much. At least the control point isn't too far away. Didn't get enough to upgrade any of the weapons that I've got. And for some reason coming out of there, I always start going the wrong way. Absolutely every time. <laughs> hey, more enemies. This might be a good time to finish the other countermeasure, too, if I can. Charge has had its day, but let's go back to some more reliable and or mission-based weapons. Yeah, the big problem with Shatter is very limited ammo. And if you're not right up close to the enemies, you're not going to score many hits. The number of projectiles boost is handy for that, because you actually just shoot more bullets. It's more likely that more of them will hit the enemies. Where is this last one? Ah. Told you they like to hide under the bridges. Headshots are incredibly effective. I don't think I even need to put on the headshot boost. I can just hit them in the head, and they're gone. There's still someone around. Oh, named enemy! Well, I guess I say named. A lot of the time, they'll just have these randomly spawning named enemies that had just ID numbers. Oh, he would have to land on the bridge below. Look at this. You get these last two shots on you, I had to drop down a level. I can't get back up so easily. But hey, while I'm here, might as well go ahead and take a look at some of the stuff that's on this floor. There's the rubber duck! You caught that fella earlier. Nothing in that one. And that one's all boarded up. Admittedly, not a lot to see, which is another reason I didn't go out of my way to check it out earlier. A yeah, surfboard. Another one we don't have any documentation on. And that's all I can get to from this point. Again, I could work my way around... Not gonna bother right now. There's the elevator. There's an opening over there, at least. Might be something good there. I'll give it one go. Now, this is as dark as it appears. You know, early on I tried some brightness enhancing stuff with the video. Don't really think it looked all that great. So, it's not difficult, just a bit tedious to go over here. And in the end, there's nothing to be found. Just a big old empty room. And then I miss my dismount and fall down another floor. But that's okay, because I want to be on floor two anyway. If I can get over to the bridge, but don't think so. The Archives is a place that I want to save for later. So I'll just drop down to the first floor again, and the control point's over on the far side. This is convenient because just like in the power plant, 
we've got two control points that are actually in the same loading zone, so I don't have to wait through a loading screen to get there. And I can cash in that countermeasure I just finished. And probably mold host in the research sector is the next of these that I'm going to have any opportunity to do. So back up to the top. I didn't cut anything. That's how fast it goes. All right. If the hiss will kindly provide no further interruptions, we'll have take two at the Salvador boss fight. kind of weird that they didn't make that hallway a loading zone. There are other hallways in this Panopticon where you have to wait for one door to close and another one to open, airlock style, and it's obvious that it's a loading screen, but I don't know what it is that they need to load. And why they don't need to load this. Hell, you know, I've only ever designed small games. Never done anything this big. So let's see if I can get some friends on my side first. At the very least, to act as distractions. As nice as it would be to kill some of these guys with Shatter, I am going to prioritize survival over the countermeasure this time. At least as much as I can. Running across the center of the room, you definitely want to be evading the whole way. You just wait up. Oh, that's my friend. That was a rocket. One nice thing about having a lot of little guys to kill along with the boss, plenty of health drops. I just have to get them out of the enemies. It's also highly advantageous to stand over the edges of the room, at least as long as I've got the shield active. I can block just about anything from a single direction, but if I got guys behind me shooting me in the back, it's not going to do me a lot of good. There we go. I managed to get the shatter kill anyway. I think there's one other guy up on the stairs, but... My friend will probably take care of him before he can become a threat. I think that rocket was actually in my face when I dodged. As I'm recording the commentary, the uh, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity has just come out. So I keep expecting that when I make those last second dodges, I'll get a chance to go in for a flurry rush. Not in this game. In this game, it just means you live a little bit longer. But, eh, good enough. It's kind of hard to tell, particularly when fighting Salvador as opposed to any other Hiss Warped, whether it's better to throw things at him while he's got the shield up and knock it down, or whether it's better to wait until it goes down and throw things at him for maximum damage. I typically try to knock his shield out, just because him throwing it is the biggest threat in this fight. And I think all of his friends are gone now, so I can just pick up a bunch of health. No more drops forthcoming, but I shouldn't need them. That thing was Salvador, the head of security. His team didn't stand a chance against the Hiss. No one here does. Now, I find it kind of weird that whenever we defeat one of the people we've been looking for that we find out have turned into Hiss, we always find their ID afterwards, and that's how we're supposed to know who it was that we just defeated. But their name appears over their health bar during the fight anyway, so we already knew. Okay, the TV. 
Another object of power gone nuts. Yeah, but first, we've got another document. This one is a supplementary report about the anchor that we found out about down in the containment sector. The one that we couldn't get to because there was this gigantic gap in the middle of the safe room. Kind of weird, the anchor actually doesn't seem to have a lot to do with the actual AWE. Here we go again. Also a chest. And then... Totally the TV. You heard that right. Levitation. Finally. Yeah, we can just sort of fly up really, really high. And also, gracefully descend. Which allows us to take the long way around things like that astral spike. And we can also evade in midair to get just that tiny bit of extra distance out of it. <laughs> Levitation also consumes no energy. Unless, as I said, you evade while you're doing it. Not really sure why these astral copies are here. They don't really do anything or add anything to the challenge as such. I mean, I guess they're there to tell you that you can shoot while you're levitating. But if you didn't know that already, you find out pretty soon because everything, just everything, is going to start dropping weapon mods that give you extra ammo efficiency while floating. I don't know what the deal is with that. It's like ten times as common as any other mod at this point. And I never use it, because I don't shoot very often while I'm levitating. Usually I'm concentrating on getting to my destination at that point. And it's also a bit harder to aim if I'm moving at the same time. I can think of a couple of places where something like that would be useful, and I'm generally using other mods anyway. And that's levitation. It is, I believe, our final power. I mean, things are looking pretty good for us mobility-wise, but... The hiss is getting close okay. to the board. Dealt with the TV. Now I can find Dylan. And the first place you want to go with your levitation ability is directly behind you. No, there's nothing out here in the void. But we do get an ability point just for doing it. I'm never going to turn down free ability points. Well, I say that. Maybe there will be a time when I would. Can't think of it, though. And now, the reason that I've been looking up so much recently may become clear. We have to watch walls and ceilings now, too, because secrets can be anywhere. And I can actually reach them all. And I can navigate twisted spaces like this room, once the enemies finally decide to show up. Um... 
I, I didn't grab anything, so I can't throw it. And I'm stuck in the holding a thing that I want to throw animation. I guess a melee attack managed to clear it out. They do occasionally still patch the game, and usually it seems like they've broken at least one thing in the course of fixing the rest. I'm hoping they'll put out a new patch soon, because there's some stuff in the game that is incredibly broken right now. Meanwhile, it's time to explore the Escher Room, because there's a document over here. It's tough to get to, because the desk is on the wall. It's the procedure document for the post box. I actually checked. I don't believe that post boxes have model numbers. And the wall on the opposite side of that one is... interesting. <laughs> Looks like Ati's been doing some cleaning here. He left his supplies on the wall. But I'm pretty sure that's everything in here. Just a bunch of sideways cubicles and... S wait a second. There's a document up there! I've never seen that before! We're gonna be finding all kinds of new stuff in this Let's Play. Yeah, you know, we haven't dealt with this paper lantern yet. We will be seeing it sometime shortly in the future. This is kind of cool once you know more about it. I'm glad I found that. Makes me want to actually search this room a bit more carefully. Because there are a bunch of other documents that I expect to exist somewhere, but I've never actually found them. My plan is to go back through every part of the game a lot more thoroughly now that I've got this levitation ability and I can actually get to all those places. So, yeah, we're, we're going to be discovering some new stuff I didn't know existed. In the meantime, we can now get up to the fifth floor. That support over there, which doesn't really attract a lot of notice previously, is just high enough we can reach this broken staircase. And levitation makes fights a lot more interesting too, because now I've got a lot more maneuverability. I don't necessarily have to dodge to places where there's a floor under me. As long as I start levitating far enough in advance. There is another floor above us that you can see, but we can't reach it. Kind of wondering about this little room here. I, I don't want to spend too much time scouring the Panopticon just yet, but you can probably see how levitation makes it a lot easier to get around. You just have to be careful when you're floating, because you only go up on your initial ascent, and if you bump your head on something, that stops your upward movement. If you're not at exactly the level you want to be at, you have to go back down. I remember reading about the swan boat. Did it blink? I think that was just a 
graphical artifact. The rubber duck blinks, but I don't think the swan boat does. Oh well. I mean, its altered effect was exploding or something, so... Some kind of balloon. I don't think we've got a document about that yet. Get well. I have a funny feeling that balloon is not going to make anybody well. It's the water cooler! I think it would be kind of cool if every time you looked at it, it took on a different shape among the things that it listed in the document, but no, it will always look like a water cooler. And finally, a crowbar. This one I've never found any documentation about. I don't know if it's supposed to be a reference to Half-Life, or if there are just documents hidden in places I've never found. Dylan. He's so close. Yeah, the, the alarms don't give me a warm, fuzzy feeling about this, though. Nor do the dead bodies all over the place. Something clearly happened in this hallway. And in this room. Hello. Can you hear me? Jesse. Yeah, that, that all looks really bad. Emily? He's gone. Dylan isn't here. He might be nearby. Or maybe the hiss got to him. I don't know. Jesse, listen. Dylan's here. With us. He just walked in. He says he is giving himself up. He's been affected by the hiss, but, but he is different than the others. We must isolate him. I'm on my way. We need to get back. I have to see my brother. Yeah, but I think we've got enough time to... finish searching the cell here. There's a very important document here about Dylan. Confidential, but it's just a list of what he did that day. He does seem to have the television turned on so that nobody can hear what he's saying to himself. We'll put a pin in that, we'll come back to it later. I think I saw another document somewhere out in this room, but I want to go up first. Save actually searching the cell for last. This is the point in the game when it kind of becomes side quest hell. Not just because I've got yet another bureau alert that I'm going to ignore, because there's not a lot of point in doing that one. But, because with Levitation, we now can access a bunch of things that we couldn't before. So, you might have noticed the mission has triggered for going back to Dr. Underhill and getting the antidote. I think she finishes that as soon as you bind the TV. It just doesn't pop the mission up until you made it to this cell. We can also cross the gap in the containment sector and get to the anchor. And there are a couple of other side quests that are going to trigger very soon. Meanwhile, it wasn't just Dylan that caused the destruction here. The building itself seems to have been pretty torn up here. They got some of those satellite dishes they used to focus control points pointing at his cell. And there's the part of the wall where he wrote Jesse's name. Apparently in blood. 
Also apparently not very long ago. It should be mostly everything, but there is one more collectible to be found. Alright, I won't take up too much of your time today, Dylan. Like I said, I want to talk about Jessie, your sister. What about her? I just want to get your perspective. What do you think of her? What kind of person is she? That sort of thing. I adored my sister. When I was little, I mean. Back in ordinary. And you don't anymore? <sighs> when I first got here, sure. I'd always hoped she'd come too. Find me, and take me home. We went everywhere together. Why should this be any different? Casper said she could come too, to the Bureau. If she wanted to. But she never did. Why do you think that is? <laughs> because she didn't care about me. She always wanted to be out on her own, seeing the world. She always said so. I guess she got what she wanted. Great. So, she wanted to see the world. Did she ever mention any place in particular? Why? We like to ask questions around here, you know that. Any particular cities, towns, landmarks, anything like that? I don't remember. What about family and friends? Were you close with anyone living outside of Ordinary? I'm done with this. Tell Casper I want pizza for lunch today. Dylan, wait. We're not... End of session. Yeah, so clearly the Bureau was trying to get information about where Jesse was out of Dylan. And at the same time, he seems to feel like Jesse abandoned him, even though she spent the entire time searching for him. Also interesting, that was Carla Vaughn, the lady from the Dr. Darling videos, doing the interview there. That's where she ended up after getting out of the research sector. I believe we'll be hearing more from her later on. For now, I don't see anything else of interest in here, although... Of course, I'm very sensitive about searching for secrets in every possible corner now. I can come back here anytime I want, so... If I missed something and I spot it later on, or somebody sees it in the recording and lets me know, then I'll be able to come back and check it out. I'll have to come back anyway once I've got level 6 clearance. It's ridiculous how many level 6 doors there are right in this area. Yeah, that just takes absolutely forever to open. But hey, we got a shortcut down. Because there is no limit to how far you can descend with levitation. But if I see enemies around, I might as well go ahead and clean them up. Got some scaffolding here, which is our main way to get from the third floor to the fourth, if we need to. And I just targeted the wrong enemy with my telekinesis, but that's fine. They all die in the end. And at this point, I think I've got enough health. I don't really need to worry about much that isn't a boss. Somebody above me. I don't need to run all the way to the staircase. I can just go right up there. The levitation ability seriously just completely changes how the game is played. And in a good way. I really, really like this part. Oh, look at that. I can take a rocket right to the face. No problems. Not that I plan to make a habit of it. I just can. Someone else is out there. Actually, a whole lot of enemies. Yeah. 
I just kind of don't want them taking pot shots at me while I'm slowly making my way down to the first floor. It's a lot of fun to cross big open spaces like this that way. And there we go. That is our sojourn into the Panopticon for the moment. Might as well see if Langston has anything new to say now that I've captured the TV. No, why listen to Langston? I'm just a Panopticon supervisor. Let me know when the hiss are gone. I miss my desk. Very optimistic, but nothing new. I'll see you later, Langston. I'll be here, like always. All right, so I've got more ability points to spend. And one thing that I really want to do is get some extra levitation, because there's an ability associated with this that is very, very good. And being able to fly farther avoids a lot of embarrassing situations. I can get a ground slam. Everybody loves the ground slam. But since I can't afford it yet, I'm going to get some extra energy. The ground slam takes tons. Eh, you can just kill anything in executive. Why not? Executive will probably be one of the earliest sectors that I go back and cover in detail. In the meantime, let's see, yeah, there was a case file for the Benikoff TV that I forgot about. Wasn't really sure what the name Benikoff was, but it seems to have just been the company name. I don't think it's a real company, I can't find anything about it online. And no idea what a TV has to do with levitation. Oh yeah, let's check out this Darling presentation that I didn't really get a good look at the last time. But first, a new presentation from the board. Once again, tutorializing something that we've known for a very long time. I have to unfilter just the unread because I highlighted it. Let's check out what Darling had to say about the oldest house. August 4th, 1964. We discovered the oldest house while investigating a suspected altered world event case in the New York City subway tunnels. The agents found their way up into the building. Once we became aware of it, it was there. For the rest of the population, it was hiding in plain sight. A, a slippery blind spot, seemingly discouraging observation. It's a, a place of power. An ongoing AWE of its own. Seemingly adhering to its physical outer constraints, and yet constantly breaking the known boundaries of reality. It's unstable. Shifting. Note, for more details on control points and the research and process to stabilize and secure the core sectors, refer to a separate presentation. After extensive research and investigation, the Bureau made the building its headquarters on November 13th, 1968. The Federal Bureau of Control was never out in the open. This, this was always an obfuscated classified top secret operation. So imagine our surprise when the building's observation resistant aspects began in some unquantifiable way to affect the Bureau as a whole.
And that's that. Still not enough stuff to upgrade anything. So join me next time as, to everyone's surprise, I'm going to ignore all the side quests and go back to Executive to talk to Dylan. See you then.